like as you stated, Imodium or Lomodo that can help them significantly in these settings. Okay, now moving along to our last CDK46 inhibitor, palbocyclib. I was using this heavily in my practice prior to the OS data. Now things have changed where the reliance is more on ribocyclib and bemocyclib with AI, but palbocyclib is still available with enabolocyb, which is pic 3 ca inhibitor. Rahul, this is another topic that we need to cover in our talk check discussion, oh, yeah. that is pic 3 ca inhibitor. Yep. Okay, coming back to palbocyclib. Stephanie, neutropenia, fatigue, and another one that we were talking about, the class side effect is ILD or pneumonitis. When it comes to palbocyclib, how do you manage some of these side effects? Yeah, so when I prescribe any of the CDK4-6 inhibitors, I do tell patients that ILD pneumonitis is a potential side effect, that it's rare. I tell them the constellation of symptoms that I would expect ILD pneumonitis to present with and tell them that those are things I would want to hear about, even if it's happening months after they've developed. For me, palbocyclib is a medicine that I'm prescribing in the metastatic setting if or when I'm prescribing it. As you alluded to, it is a prescription that I'm using less frequently than ribo and abema at this point. But with any of the CDK4-6 inhibitors, we sometimes get a CT scan and see some haziness and then be stuck wondering, oh goodness, what is this? In, in which case we lean, just like in the setting of Pembro, we lean a little bit on the clinical context that the patient is in, our pulmonary colleagues for things like good sputum samples, the patient's symptoms, the nature of their disease, to make our decisions on whether we think that that's a post-viral symptom, disease progression, or truly a drug effect. For the most part, I would say that it's clear clinically what's happening to your patients. You either can clearly elicit a history of an infectious sign or symptom and diagnose that, or you have other evidence of disease progression that makes you suspicious that what you're seeing is lung-based disease or you're stuck thinking it's your CDK4-6 inhibitor. The management of ILD pneumonitis is the same as any other pneumonitis. I would treat it with high-dose steroids and hold the drug. It is not a side effect that I have re-challenged with um, a CDK4-6 inhibitor. It has given me pause on whether to use other therapeutics that are associated with ILD. Patients with pre-existing ILD were excluded from trials yep. in the destiny family of trials, which is obviously what you're all nodding and thinking about. <laughs> but trastuzumab droxican is such an effective therapy that in a patient that's had a full recovery and now has clear lungs and otherwise has metastatic disease, I think I turn to that shared decision-making and careful lung follow-up for a patient that I would choose to treat with a different therapy, not another CDK4-6 inhibitor, and a history of a pneumonitis event. Back to side effects of palbo have really been the cytopenias more profound than with the other two CDK4-6 inhibitors that has led to really broad sweeping dose reductions. The number of patients that I was able to maintain on 125 of Palbo was quite low. Most of my patients ended up with a dose reduction relatively early in their disease course due to persistent cytopenias. I don't know if that's why we ended up seeing less of the other side effects like transaminitis because they were never on the high dose so. palbo for long. Um, but otherwise patients, once you found the right dose for their marrow to stay happy, tended to do quite well on palbo. And I think that's still true. Just like with the other two CDK4-6 inhibitors, I still tend to start at that 125 dose and just monitor their CBC quite carefully. <laughs> And again, going back to ILD for a second here, you touched on immunotherapy, something that we're using heavily, CDK4-6 inhibitors, TDXD, of course, mortality associated. So we have to put our internist hats and rely on our pulmonologist. 